This presentation comments on Gregory Ulmer's apparatus table from the website networkedbook.org and in particular the breakdown of orality, literacy and electricy in terms of the axis uh, right and wrong for orality, uh, true and false for literacy and joy, sadness for electricy. And because Ulmer is a poet at heart, I'm going to try to represent these three axes through poetry. The first is a poem called Lady Liberty, which comments on right and wrong. The second poem is called The Parable of the Leaf, and that comments on truth and falsehood. And the third poem is called You're the Girl in the Book, which is an interpretation of joy and sadness. Thank you. Lady Liberty, her lungs collapsed, she could not breathe. Choking banks of pale gray fog billowed about her feet. Her eyes stung, she prepared to grieve. Nine short years have passed, more than 2,500 killed. Since that day, the day the city that never sleeps stood still. On that dark, dark day, when we told ourselves this can't be happening and Lady Liberty was raped not once but twice hate and greed collided in a living hell Parable of the Leaf Twelve years ago on a late October morning I saw a gathering of golden orange and golden red sugar maple leaves on the sidewalk as I turned onto 5th Street near Temple. One particular torn and blood-red leaf was sitting in the lotus position, speaking softly, holding the others wrapped. At my arrival he paused and I read in his look the suggestion that I should stop and listen, which I did, and then he told this parable. A leaf fell from a mulberry tree in a small front garden on 5th Street and was crushed and buried. Buried deep, deep within a mountain of trash at a dump in Paramount. A lady with asthma lived in a cream and turquoise craftsman next to the tree. The male leaf murmured, nice, referring to cream and turquoise craftsman, and another at his side nodded in soft assent. The lady passed the mulberry tree many times in her long life, but not once did she stop and close her eyes and praise in silent contemplation its generations of fallen leaves. I tell you this, when a leaf falls for a lady with asthma who does not know the life it gave for her, that leaf has lived the greatest life of all. Ah, uh, that's corny, said one leaf and blew away. But the others all agreed. Xavier was the best storyteller among them. You're the girl in the book who dreams not of princes or knights or castles or crowns, but of a handsome and sweet regular guy. The kind of guy who draws with ease a young maiden's sigh, and when he catches your eye, you'll look away, then quickly back, then at your toes, and all the while he'll consider you with a curious smile. You're the girl in the book who knows he will find you, like he does in your dreams, and you will float through life with him the way you float from page to page, oarless under white moonlight, cruising through chapters, oblivious, adrift in the ebb and flow of the intricate plot of the oceans of the tide. You'll punch his arm playfully and make unhurried love and fall asleep on his chest. You'll think about him when he's away on business, when you take your lunch break at work, when you're together. 
You'll vacation abroad, but he won't tell you where. He'll laugh at your indignation and cushion your blows. You'll float down the Seine, past Cathedral Notre Dame de Paris, and dine late at night at a family cafe, at a tiny table for two on a cobblestone lane that's more of a sidewalk, with barely enough room for passers-by to pass by. And you'll walk home, hand in hand, with your handsome and sweet regular guy. But you will not see the slow fog ascend, or the warm glow between you cool. He will apologize and mean it every time. He will search inside himself. He will look more than you know. But he will not find the man he used to be. And one winter night you will hear him break your heart in two. And from that moment you will be like a sleeping princess in a fairy tale, waiting for the only lips that can wake you, that can help you live your dream again. And it will help him. It will signal land to this shipwrecked man. It will signal love to a lover you no longer see. And it will shine like a lighthouse through eternity. But he will not make it back, and his lips will never wake you. You're the girl in the book who dreams not of princes or knights or castles or crowns, but of a handsome and sweet regular guy. And you know he will find you, like he does in your dreams. And you will float through life with him the way you float from page to page, Oarless under white moonlight, cruising through chapters, oblivious, adrift in the ebb and flow of the intricate plot of the oceans of the tide.